state. Okay, good, then. Good morning and sit up straight. Close your eyes. Remove your glasses. So this is like your first signal about the senses when the teacher says, take your glasses off. The point is the external vision officially is now less important than that internal awareness. So let the, let the gaze of the eye, the eyeball, the eye organ, let the pupil gaze level out of those closed lids. The ear is equally open, pores of skin, tongue, nose, all senses equally open level in their own way. Now, when we are ordinarily looking out in the world with our curious minds, that in itself, you might say, leans forward, moves toward the sound. Pranant says, when you're listening to gossip, <laughs> that, you know, the ear comes forward, you want to hear. In this yogic state, each of the senses, including the ear, sent back in. Not reaching, leaning toward anything, receiving pores of the skin, receiving. the sides of the tongue receding toward the root. Join your palms. Now, what is the root of the senses? The pathway of those receiving senses moves first straight in, right? The gaze of the eye is level. So that vision seems straight back. And then somewhere in the middle of the brain, that visual sense can drop down ear can receive in and the hearing drop down. Tongue receding toward its root drops, goes in and down. All of these senses. So that downward root of the sensitivity, especially in the face, skin, is the root of the Spine. Follow your breath and your sense. This is in. Pay homage to this practice. Pay homage to that root teacher, Patanjali. Bow your head and release your hands. Raise your head and open your eyes. Okay. Hmm. Who 
else is okay. Good. <clears throat> um, so gay, just if, just for my information, is it difficult to bend the knee and straighten it or one more than the other? It looks swollen. You're very limpy. It's hard to straighten. It is and it, a while of bending it. But it's more it's more hard, it's harder to straighten it. And you're limping. Yes. Once I get started, I can walk, but it's hard to get started. All right. Uh, we're going to work on the floor for a while, but let me say I'm going to try to make it a exercise. <laughs> so it won't be like standing poses on the floor, but it won't necessarily be easy. Get a bare floor and a strap. The, the exception to the bare floor rule is uh, if you need neck support. Okay, everybody else. Oh, Karen. Uh, you may also need a bolster for that bursa. But at first, don't use it. You're, you're trying to follow us and take a rest when it gets painful, when things go wrong. Okay, so <clears throat> Cheryl, you know what we're up to, we're up to Sukta Parankushna in all its glory and variations. So uh, you may also need a little bit of support for that one hip in certain poses. We shall see, it, this is your choice, but I'm not gonna complain at, if you choose. <laughs> Okay, or anybody for that matter, if, if you decide something's really going wrong and you need support and you can't um, align yourself and use your body and strength to come out of it, do take support. We're starting straight away from a wall, feet clear, head clear. In theory, you should be able to stretch your arms overhead with nothing obstructing you. Feet to feet tips to fingertips. Take Supta Urdva Hastasana, arms overhead. Stretch the legs, stretch the arms. Do everything you can. And uh, gay, an interesting thing to do would be to put, here's a prop for you, a roll blanket under that knee can make it so you can work the leg muscles without feeling a threat. So you roll it as thick as you need to to be able to support the knee joint. That is to say, above it comfortably and below it comfortably. It's gotta be, it can't feel asymmetrical and you need to feel as if you can use your muscles and activate the leg. Stretch your toes, arms overhead. If possible, well, let's start. Turn your arms facing each other. Thumb side down. Palms face each other. Mm -hmm. Roll those triceps. Roll your front thighs toward each other. Stretch the legs. And I'm holding you here too, but it's a safe, theoretically, pose. Work that lengthening of your 
bones. Stretch your foot bones. Open the ankle bones, shin bones. Now, when you get to the knee, uh, gay, skip me. <laughs> okay, lengthen the thigh bone, shin bone. Forget the joint itself. Lengthen the bones. Lengthen the muscles. And this is above and below each joint. That means your vertebra have to lengthen upward, downward, the bone itself. Knowing what we know that quite likely the bone isn't actually growing. What you're really doing is arranging the muscles, ligaments, tendons that control those bones. You're lengthening them and reducing any kind of grip and tension on that bone. Lengthen your bones. That allows the joints to open. Breathe. Keep the senses receding. Now, uh, join your legs and bend the right knee up to your chest. Take your arms to your side. If the knee hurts, hold behind the knee. If the knee is faint, hold in front of the shin. Karen, you could uh, take a strap if it bothers the armpit and keep it looser, strap the knee. Karen Carpenter, how much flexion you put in that hip is up to you. You could um, write because sitting actions, flexion actions aren't necessarily good. So be soft there in the hip. Now, hold your foot or hold a strap, stretch the leg to vertical. Those who can catch the big toe and fully straighten, fully lengthen the bones, do so. Now, gay, hold with two hands because you're working semi-therapeutically here. Karen Carpenter, Karen Laplace, both of you have hips to consider. Hmm? Watch the depth of the groin. Let those senses recede in and drop all the way down into the hip pelvic floor region. Even out your breathing on both sides. Lengthen those thigh bones on both sides. We often say compact the thigh bone into the hip socket. And I, I don't today want to use that word compact, but I absolutely want to emphasize lengthen the bones toward the sockets. Move that right thigh back toward its hamstring, which brings it more correctly to the socket. Come out slowly. You may come out with a straight leg. You may come out with a bent leg. If you go with the straight leg, land with the hamstring first. Bend up the left knee. Oh, sorry. Yes, stretch your arms overhead. Word for hastasana. Be symmetrical. And then arms to the sides. Bend up the left knee. Fold that knee to the, we're going faster now, I've been watching. Hold behind the knee if the knee pains you. Keep that right leg straight. Keep that leg on the floor straight. Okay. The, the movement of the senses inward should stay inward 
keep track of things inwardly. Catch that foot with the strap or your hand and stretch the leg up. Now, when you're working therapeutically, that means with pains in the region, hip, knee, sacrum, pelvis, groin, also work in issues, stick with the right ankle, the vertical leg, horizontal spine. When you're working more deeply with the all parts, you catch the foot with your hand. Take the deeper pose. Now stretch those bones. And get, this is not the injured leg. <laughs> so stretch those bones there. Move that shin, yes. Thigh to the hip, the other end toward the knee. Lengthen the middle of the bone outward toward the ends. The center of each ankle bone, those little marbles of ankle bones, the center should expand. That ankle should open. Take a deeper stretch if you can. Pelvis, hip, knee, adjacent joints and structures, issues that way, stay vertical and work to powerfully lengthen your bones. This includes the pelvic bones, the hip blades. They too expand. Release, come out. Straight leg or bent. If you land with the straight leg, land the hamstring first. Okay. Uh, roll to the side, come up sitting. We aren't going to stay long. Um, people with organic problems, you work with a bolster. You would just prop yourself up. So it makes it easier to make you see this shape of my torso. You don't have that problem. You stay flat. You bend the right leg. You catch with the strap or with your fingers that leg. Now, again, organic problems. You're already going to be in this shape. When you stretch your leg up, you'll be folded. There'll still be some abdominal work, but it'll be minimal. The rest of you, you have to do it yourself. So those with more flex, those with less, you're still coming up. You want to see if you can get every rib off the floor. <laughs> see if you can lift your ribs off the floor and bring your head toward your shin and your shin straight leg, Marcia, toward your head. Lengthen those bones. This is where it gets difficult, keeping the length of the bones as you move deeper. As you move with strength, which is a obvious and natural contraction, how do you maintain your extension? Keep it right leg up. Catch with two hands. Take a big breath. Use that breath to sense the length of your bones. And exhaling, there is a contraction amidst that length to bring shin to head, head to shin, and release back out. Those on the bolster, there's no requirement that you pull off the bolster with your trunk. That is the, the shape itself is giving you some internal action. Okay, ribs come out. 
time to change sides. But first, take full urtvahastasana and release all those fibers. Do you notice the work here made, made things pull forward? Okay, lying in supta urtvahastasana, settle back again. Settle those abdomen organs and fibers back. Then bend the left knee, or as you did last time. Keep the stretch those limbs, stretch those all of your bones, pelvis bones, the left leg being up in the air. You can feel it if you look your left pelvis bone is behaving shorter than your right pelvis bone. That outer pelvis it bone feels shrinking. Lengthen it. Make it match the right pelvis bone. Now you're going for the abdominal work. See if you can pick every rib off the floor. Keep that down leg down. And release. Good. Karen Laplace. Not, not you could have also just taken support. Depends on what's comfy. But that's a stay cool. <laughs> right? That's hard work. Don't heat up much. Okay, out you come. And lie flat, supta, urdva, hastas. Now, we're going to take that abdominal work and uh, change it. And you can stay on this bolster. Might feel good. Those, some of you might adopt the bolster once you see what we're doing. This is with bolster. You got to prop up. So you feel the base of the rib cage is being supported. If you're like this, the work on the neck is too much. If you're up a little higher, it's easier on the neck. And you support where you need to be, base of the rib cage against. So if it's the bolster, one, then two. This is movement two. The knee goes to the side. And the movement three is bringing, I'm going to show you at an angle. Knee to the side. My elbow is lifted. My elbow is drawing back behind my head. My other hand is helping. And uh, if all goes well with the hip, that forearm goes behind the head. Now, those who are holding the big toe, you hold it in a three finger clasp and the very same thing happens. Okay. If you're working without, you wait till you get to this second stage before you go to work with the abdomen. Now, once you get that forearm behind your head, a lot of this abdomen can relax. And recede, and that's true for those on the bolster or on the floor. Now, Chaya, it, unless there is a shoulder injury, I want to see that forearm behind your head instead of the strap. So bring, do you see how my forearm slides over my head? Yeah, keep it there. Rest on your forearm with the upper arm. Yeah. 
and if possible, stretch the leg on the floor. Very straight. Couple of breaths. So you feel the movement in the abdomen. This is stirring things. Release that arm, release that leg. This is not just a structural pose that helps rotation in the hip. Karen Carpenter, how you doing? You avoided that one, correct? Lovely. Now, your- and Just um, a question about the bent knee. Hang on, it, it, I'm okay. still with Karen Carpenter. Um, it, the only thing I might encourage you, Karen, to do with this pose is experiment with this action. Instead of a bent knee rotation, just experiment with this. Is that, you'll not right now. Is that okay action? Good, work that way. That's going to take the place of Supta 2. Okay, or you go to a high wall. See how high I am, so it's not an issue. And do you see what I'm doing with my foot? You had both positions. Okay, the rest of you, we have side two, do we not? Karen Laplace, question. Yes, uh, with the bent leg, is it an open bent leg or is it a closed? Yes, open. at okay. first the bend is about 90 degrees and you keep this 90 degree, this angle, shin to thigh, keep uh -huh. it open, don't fold. Okay. Otherwise, your foot will never get to your head. Right? It needs to be up here if it's going to get to your head. This is going away from the head. This is coming toward, so it's got to move toward. So you take that straight leg up, so to one. Then the knee goes to the side. That's the second pose. Yeah. Now, Cheryl, one day you will learn to let go with right hand. And, and be able to be relaxed, more relaxed. That wasn't bad. You were clinging to the wall, but that's good. Was it painful? Just strong. Okay, good Chaya, good Monica, good everybody. And uh, uh, Gay, is it true that, uh, how is your knee right now? Is it feeling less puffy? Yes, okay, we want less puffy. All right, come out but you must work the foot, you must lengthen your bones, you must expand your bones. Third part, you might need a wall support, Karen Carpenter, you might also, anybody else, not sure, but I'm going for working without. Supta, we usually call this Supta two, but I'm doing it third, so I can't call it Supta two. So I'm calling it Supta Prankushtasana lateral. Start as usual, Supta Urdhva Stasana. Then either straight or bent, the right leg comes up. You catch your big toe or you catch a strap. 
the left leg goes perpendicular to the spine, out to the side, the right leg, or sorry, the left leg, the one on the floor, in theory, stays exactly as it is as you take your abdomen off to the side. Now, you've just gotten through a big, you know, squishy, asymmetrical, squishy contraction. So you need to understand that this third part is actually spreading from here to work well. It's got to come back out from the center. Don't just think you're moving hands and feet or arms and legs. You've got to spread your abdomen again. The leg can go wherever it goes, but keep it straight, lengthen your bones. And uh, um, it is better gay for you to use a bolster under the thigh as support rather than the wall, because I want your leg to stay extended. No blockage. Expand the armpits, the ribs. Keep the gaze of the eye itself level. Yeah. Karen Carpenter, you, on the other hand, probably like having that femur bone tucked in with the wall. So this is two different leg issues. Up you come, straight leg. Watch what that abdomen does. And bend the knee, release, go back out, straight or bent leg, and take the arms overhead and deflate once again all the grip and activity in that abdomen, long bones. Recover the equal length in the pelvis bones. Then side two. Don't forget the leg on the floor. Don't, don't ever give up the leg on the floor. Now be in a straight line. With yourself. Long bones. Using the support of the wall, anchors, pushes in a way, it's like standing, it pushes the bone into the socket, hopefully in a healthful way. Not everybody needs that. Some people really need the extension more. Expand from the center. Keep the scissors dropping in to the middle of the brain and then down. And come up. And back down. Now, <clears throat> we're going to do this facing the floor. So some of you are going to need support doing this. Karen, a carpenter, don't do this. Not, not your pose today. What would you do instead? I think you do something like the opposite pose. <laughs> you will uh, do 
either or both because we're going to do two sides so you can change your pose. We're going to do Dandasana. You will do Dandasana with your back to the wall and your legs straight. And then you'll shift to Virasana or, and as much as possible, actual Virasana with those feet apart. And you're sitting on whatever height you need, but Virasana, internal rotation, right? That's the point. Okay, so the rest of us, Here's the prop free version. I'll go on a diagonal again, lying down. And this is going to act like my right side. So I put my right knee off to the right, prop free. Okay, what I want to do is let my abdomen spread left spread toward this straight leg side. I can even take this straight leg and move it a little bit to the eye to get more space, more width. Okay, then some of you will be a group to straighten the leg. Some of you will straighten the leg. See how my foot is turned slightly up not down. You won't see it on the camera if it's on the floor. It's up because I'm rolling that guy. Okay. Some of you can not quite do this on the floor, but you can do it with some support. So you take a rolled blanket under that groin and stretch that leg with support so you're not as flat. Okay. Now that support, if you use a bolster, should be right at the groin hips, right at the groin hip socket, not at the knee, extend out toward the knee, that is fine, but bring it in close, yes, and then spread out onto it, that roll right next to the pubis, now when you're first in this pose and stiff, your trunk will kind of be facing that right leg, and as the hip opens and the waist opens, you'll be able to face the floor and stretch. Roll that right buttock down. Move the right thigh away from your head. Now, do you need a strap for your right foot, Cheryl? Cheryl's just gotten started with an experiment here with the rescue. Can you come out, let that right knee bend, let yourself turn toward the right leg. You want to come out just kind of carefully and roll out, turn out, come up sitting, sit there for a second straight. Just let this register. This actually is strong work in the pelvis. change sides. Now, you know, it's very possible to catch that big toe and make a super big stretch. Don't do that. Treat this like Sukta Padang Kushtasana. So it, at the most flexible, you're touching your big toe with left big toe with left hand. Most of you, you won't be doing that. You'll just be perpendicular. That looks kind of interesting, Cheryl. Is it getting the spot? 
good. Yes, very much that left thigh as you roll the leg to try to get those toes to turn up to the ceiling. That roll is from the hip socket, not the ankle. Lengthen the left buttock. Release the navel. And then slowly come out. One thing at a time, bend one thing at a time, roll to ease those joints. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Okay. Um, if you want to experiment more with that, I think we've done this before. I don't know if it was in this class, but a way of experimenting more with that looks like this. If you take, I'm gonna take, this is my left leg and I catch it with my right hand and I'm rolling to my right with the left leg at an arm's length. Now, my right leg stretched out behind. Left leg is on top. See how we're kind of where we were last time, except I haven't turned my trunk yet. That's okay. I'm going to get there. I just want to go farther. So I'm going to push and roll as if I'm rolling toward Hanumanasana. You can go as far as you want with that and roll onto your back in a huge pose and roll back over. Hanumanasana. You can go as far as you like. Hmm? So it's Parvita. Opposite hand holds the foot. And you roll. And once that foot gets down to the floor, you start pushing your two feet away from each other, stretching your two legs far away from each other. It completely doesn't matter if you choose to roll over into Hanumanasana, but you just keep stretching those legs. You really have to roll that buttock properly to get over in Hanumanasana. Mm -hmm. And then you can roll back down and try to keep that leg as close to you as possible. So you roll onto your back and that leg comes over to, oh, what is the pose? You got your foot on the floor right next to your head. What is this one? So you just go over your head back and forth toward Hanumanasana and whatever that other pose is. So it's not Parvrita Supta Parankushtasana. It is still Supta Parankushtasana lateral gone. On wild. Okay, did you do both sides? Okay. Now, <clears throat> can we get uh, some of you are still very much on side two? Mm -hmm. There is, of course, Cheryl and another, yes, the coming up stage, but I wouldn't go to the back bend stage, just the real coming up stage before you go back down.
because at this point it's it depends on your practice but Stretch that back leg, back leg. The one toes down on the floor, stretch that leg. Okay, now <clears throat> we have to lie back down, take Sutta Urtva Hastasana. And then uh, um, Gay, if you can, go straight to headstand after this stretch. The rest of you, dog pose. If your knee is safe, Gay, do dog pose. But if it still won't straighten, go straight to headstand. The rest of you, dog pose and a headstand. Adamukha Svanasana. Feel free to put a belt around the arms if that strength is lacking. Gay, do take support of a wall. It's just that an injury like this can, can knock your symmetry funny. So, Park yourself in the center there so you can stay centered. Lengthen your bones. Expand your joints. Expanding the joints is think that works very well with the senses drawn in. It's kind of like the expansion of the joints invites the senses in. Headstand, sheer shasana or preparation. So Monica, the belt going just below the elbows is frequently helpful in keeping the head kind of unencumbered, either right on the joint or just low it. So you cannot hyperextend in the forearms, elbows. And lengthen the bones so your head has complete freedom there. Again, okay, spread the feet, open the ankles, skip the knee, but communicate very firmly with the feet ankles, shins, thighs, ignore the knee, work on either side of it. So Chaya, when that leg comes up in the air, raise it absolutely straight, raise it. And there is a, a, an increase in weight toward the head, toward the shoulders when this leg comes up bent. When it comes up straight, you have, the, uh, you have some control 
over sort of the physical weight going in. If you leave it bent, it becomes much heavier on the shoulders. So as soon as that leg comes off the floor, be lengthening it. Now, I see there's some issue here. Something else is happening. Cramping this part. My uh -huh. cramping. So it's happening even before the leg comes off the floor. That cramp begins. Yes. Okay. So no more headstand, no more of that shape. Different shape for you. Hmm. What shape? Here's your shape. Don't sink in the shoulders. Make sure it's a nice headstand shape. Do you have a cramp? No cramp. Is this helpful, Chaya? No cramp. Okay. So extra action, Chaya. The rest of you feel free to come out. We're moving on, but watch this, Chaya. You come into that pose. One thing I see with you is these shoulders are coming down. Keep them up as if your head wanted to go to the wall in the headstand place. Don't let it sink. Hmm? So you go back as if you're working for headstand and then do work on lifting and pulling a leg. Again, don't sink. Stay up and pull. Stay up and stretch. Okay. Elbows in at shoulder width, Chaya. Wrists wide. Keep shoulders lifted, stretch the spine back and raise the leg, raise it straight. Stretch it straight, push through the metatarsals, open your bones. And then you come out and change sides. Okay, now, um, uh, gay. I want to work towards Setu Bandha, but I don't want to irritate that knee. So maybe we just have to get you in a chair shoulder stand so your knee stays safe. Chair shoulder stand. The rest of you uh, with knees that are safe and Karen Carpenter, this is a, the help, helpful one for you. You want to do Chatush Padasana. And this Chatush is done with the feet hip width apart. Don't take them wide and don't join them yet. Some of you might join them. So go hip width and feel free to raise your heels to get more lift. That's going to happen sooner or later, but that extra length there gives more space to the trunk. Stretch your arms, raise the hips, roll your shoulders. If you see this, I'm holding the sides of my feet and I'm pulling 
down, um, pulling toward the floor. The other thing I'm doing is I'm reaching the arm away from my skull, reaching the shoulder blade and the arm away from the skull, standing on those feet, stand on the arms, I lift my spine. Now on those feet, make sure you're on the big toe base joint and the second toe. Stretch the arm. Karen Higgins, you do what is helpful in that arm. Okay, heels to the wall, toes off the wall. Are you comfy there, Kay? Is your knee touching the back of the chair? I, I hope not. Good, good. All right, Karen Carpenter, your feet are rolling out. Get on the big toe base joint of your right foot. That's it. The outer calf has to cut in, but also you feel that action. Guess what? In the hip. So stay on, you're rolling out again, stay on the big toe base joint and raise those hips. Okay, now come out, please. And rest for a bit. Gay, you stay exactly where you are. And now you have two choices according to your um, needs here. One is the karate, that's the lesser pose, and the other is shoulder stand. Take the one you can take. I'm gonna set up a Vibrita Karani the way I'd like you to set it up if you choose that pose. Shoulder stand, I'm gonna trust you basically know what to do with. This feet Brita Karani is, has several blankets and a bolster. So I take a blanket to start with and I elevate my bolster. Then I elevate it some more. I've got extra thickness of blanket over the top of that bolster. So now the bolster is like wider and taller. And now I've got a raising the floor underneath this bolster. Not as much as the bolster was raised. Last blanket is a roll under my neck. Karen Carpenter, are you going to do a shoulder stand to repeat Prita Karani? This pose? Okay, you, if you're going to do a set to Banda, elevate your feet also. Got your hips elevated, elevate your feet. I don't know what pose you're picking here. So I, I can't make suggestions. One thing I see, Gay, is that your head is a little bit off to your right side. Is it? Yes, that looks better to me. That might not feel good to you, but it's a little bit straighter to me. See that the back of the skull is centered. So this very, is there anybody who's going for the Vipriya Karani? I see, I think that's Karen.
So Cheryl, are you close enough to the wall that you are going to work on a Setubanda form? Or are you, I don't know. Watch your, watch your strapping if you're. Yeah. I love the wall that far away because you can catch yourself. And you can also stretch your legs if you get out there horizontal legs. Biceps, big your biceps. Now put your feet on the wall, one foot on the wall, Cheryl. Good. Up the wall a bit. And the other. Yep. Now. Yes. Is that okay? You wiggle your toe. Maybe that's positive because you're staying. <laughs> okay, that is almost uh, the top thigh horizontal. That's good. See, for me, it is easier to get a notes like that and stay than it is to do the. Uh, Hopping in and out. The hopping in and out just kills my neck. But this pose, I love going into. Karen Carpenter stretched through the inner foot again. That big toe base joint extension through the shin is important for the hip. I hope you feel the difference in the hip when you connect to your foot that way. The drop, that, that uh, um, supination of the foot that's going on is, uh, is a part of the problem. It's a reflection of the misalignment in the hip. So keep working to roll that thigh in, even in these quiet poses. Monica, I kind I see the corner of you, so I'm not ent entirely clear if things are going well for you. <laughs> So give me a sign if you're okay. <laughs> Good, thank you. <laughs> Roll those shoulders under, shoulders way under, Monica. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remind myself to work on your shoulders in next class. Please uh, begin to, if you're not out already, please slowly make your way out of this Vipirikarani or Hilder stand. All right, so please come up and 
let's get ready for a supported Shabbasana. So <clears throat> my view of a supported Shabbasana today looks like this. Here's a sort of neatly folded blanket, headstand or shoulder stand size, lying down on the floor. You might have as many, depends on the height here. This is not much, it might be like a fingernail length. It needs to be a suggestion. It's not a strong command, a suggestion. So if you're flexible and light or you need chest opening, then take two blankets. Otherwise, one is sufficient. And I'm getting other stuff out of the way. So I'm going to do my Shavasana on this. And I'm just coming off the edge of that thin set of blankets in such a way that the very top chest gets really, and it's released in a um, pleasant, normal, kind of ordinary way. It's like you're in Shavasana, but clearly the chest has more room. So you're somewhere on your shoulder blade, halfway down maybe, and the top shoulder blade goes to the floor. And this very top chest band, top sternum, armpit to armpit, collarbone to collarbone, gets rolled open. And you can put whatever height suits you under the neck and skull. Feet come apart, hip width. They might come as far apart as the sticky mat. So that, that top edge there is uh, to, is only to open that very top lung and release the throat. More sensitivity, take fewer blankets. More need for chest lift, use the second blanket. Must be comfortable, must not feel like work. It must feel like an extra bit of shabasana. So the broadness of the support and the elevation gives a suggestion to the trunk itself to be elevated and expansive. Release the body from the feet to the head, feet, ankles. Think with those bones and muscles again. Lengthen and settle. Feet, ankles, shins, thighs, pelvis, bones, spinal vertebra shoulder blades, arm bones, wrist bones, hand fingers, thumbs, deeply relax the thumbs.
and I now go across those column points, shoulder blades, drop the interior of the throat, the side walls of the throat, and mouth, jaws. Now, relax the face. Relax individually, separately. Each of the five senses represented in the face. That pupil of the eye seems straight back. Like gravity is drawing the vision. Release the hearing. Release the sense of smell. The tongue to its root. And the sensitivity of all the skin is kind of uh, extra strong but that sensitivity is in the face so around the lips release that skin imagine in each sense that you are observing from the back, however you reckon the back of that organ, the eye sort of obvious. When you're very intent and focused, people even say the eyes bug out. So you release that eye in. Don't cup the ear forward. Listen with the back of the ear. Release the root of the tongue. Taste from the back of the tongue. Feel from the inside of the skin. It is 9.15. You may stay as you are in Shavasana or move to the next part of your day.